All right, well, let's jump right into the guy who would have been probably RB one, two, three last year because people like those big numbers and, and crazy things. Mr. 2K, uh, the Canadian cowboy, Chuba Hubbard. Um, let's let's get right into him because I, I, I find it interesting right now that six foot small 208. For yeah. those that don't know, I think there's a there's a there's something to be. Uh, I think there's room to grow that frame another couple of pounds if he wants to, if he can keep that functional speed with growing that frame anyway. Um, so I just think it's interesting that he was just everywhere. People were all over him. Like he would have been such a high pick last year. And then he comes in and struggles a little bit, but there's some reasons if you dig, dig into what was going on over there, that there was some struggles going on. Um, the overall, general- um, yeah, what well, goes this stuff, maybe? Drink. What's your thoughts on Chuba Hubbard? Because, I mean, this is, like I said, this is a guy in 2019, 2094 yards, 6.4 a carry, 21 touchdowns, 23 receptions, uh, 198 yards on those receiving uh, yards. And then 2020, down to 4.7 a carry. Only five touchdowns, eight receptions. But the year before that, in 2018, he caught 22 balls. I think that's worth mentioning. Anyway, um, what are your thoughts here? Give us give us a lowdown, and then I'll tell you. For sure. I think he struggled. I think it's tough to always see a running back come back and struggle significantly, whether, whether it's with injury, just production in general. Um, because, you know, other players in this class did the same thing, and it worked out for them. Last year, I think, pretty consensus like ETM was going to be a late mid to late day two pick, right? He was probably going to be, he, in some circles, he was going to be, a you know, around the AJ Dillon range last year. That was going to be him. But what's happened now is we don't know where he's going to be. We don't really know why he decided to come back, what he needed to really prove, um, some of the guys who did come back and we talked about Harris before Harris needed to prove he was, he was the guy. He, he was a, he was a good pass catcher. He improved his accelerative qualities. He improved the top end speed. He needed to prove that. And he did, and he might receive first round draft capital because of it, which is huge. Hubbard's going to be probably a late day two guy. Um, probably in the, I'd say the mid half of the third round, about the mid third round, I think is where he, where he's kind of being valued right now. Um, great top end speed. He's the best top end speed of any back in this class. Um, Canadian track star. Um, he's a good, you know, good functional mover. Um, good in, good in tight quarters. There you go. Drink up. Um, but it's man, it's, it's, it's always tough to see the production dip. And I, for the life of me, I don't know where, how the NFL is going to value him. If there might be a team that gets excited um, and really likes him and takes him, you know, early mid second round, wouldn't be shocked. Um, but I just don't know what kind of role he's going to play at the NFL level. And that's kind of the tough thing is last year, if he would have came out, he, he would have probably been in a role, you know, immediately. Right. And now the, the running back position has become so saturated in my opinion that there's not too many landing spots he's going to go and see significant work right away. Okay. So is that, if you, if you had to rank him kind of in these guys, is he, is he in the next tier or is he, is he now a full tier? Maybe I know you said you're not done with him, but like, mm-hmm. would he be in the consideration of the next tier or is he like just a full tier below those guys? Are we in tier three now? Are we done with tier two? Mm-hmm. I think he's in tier three. I think, so the start of tier three is he he's probably going to be in that mix. I think there's a, there's a lot, there's probably three, four, even five guys that could be in that mix, but he's a, he's a teaser T3 guy to me in this class. Um, I just don't think there's a clear role and expectation from at the NFL level. Um, and that's tough. Like all the other guys above him, we all know those guys are probably going to come in and command a significant workload in one way or another, you know, Kenneth Gamel's, probably going to be, you know, a, a good receiving back off the bat. ETN is going to be the home run that that he is. And, you know, the other two guys, Williams and Williams and Harris are going to, you know, be potentially bell cows. Um, Williams probably on the two down spectrum as well. Um, but man, it's tough. 
it's tough. We don't know where we don't know where he's yeah. gonna land. We don't know who values him high, and that's gonna be difficult coming in draft day. I think he cost himself some money. For sure. sure. For sure. Oh, for um, sure. Bummer for but, him to come but back into that situation. He may have put himself in a better situation for himself for that second contract, being kind of falling down the board a little bit to the Niners aren't gonna the 49ers, let's just say you said ETM would be a great player there. Chuba Hubbard would be fucking awesome at the same time. Oh, for sure. 100%, 100%. Like that's a perfect system to, for him to fit in there. And the Niners aren't going to probably draft a guy and put the capital in somebody like ETN. So Hubbard could fall down to the third round and maybe the Niners say, hey, let's snatch this guy up and just make our offense just absolutely elite. So there are some certain circumstances where it may it cost him some money, but it might actually help his game in the long run. Uh, obviously you could probably make the argument either way. I'm making the argument pro Chuba uh, for sure. fantasy points here. Um, I, this is, I mean, he had 328 carries. It's not like he can't get a right. decent amount of carries. And right. Hold, that was, he that held was up 2000. that entire 19 season without any issues. Didn't miss a game. Um, and, right. And was, so for reference that 328 carries it's a lot of in carries. 2019 is five more carries than Javante Williams had in 19 and 20 combined. Um, he had 133 carries last year, Chuba that is, um, which was 20 less carries than Javante Williams in seven games compared to 11. So, I mean, he was still getting the ball a decent amount. Um, yeah. And, and that, that 328 is a significant number. So I think... I think Chuba, like for me, I'm I'm taking Chuba ahead of Gainwell f- for sure because I, I just I, he's he is a guy who I know is going to be at the running back position, and if he goes in, he's going to get most. Uh, there could be cer- certain situations where he doesn't, but like the usage for him is as I know where it's going to be. Like I know he's going to get running back potential. Gainwell, there's unknowns about how the right person to use him. Um, now the system has to be right for Chuba Hubbard, just like the, the the coach and the usage needs to be right. A lot of things need to be right for Gamewell to be in there. And then Hubbard then has an elite trait, if not two elite traits, whereas Gainwell may not have an elite trait outside of catching the football, which puts him in a precarious situation because he is kind of more of a receiver than right. the running back. And Chuba is more of a, definitely more of a running back. Of is, is, is he, and, and he does have the elite speed. And I, I think that his change of direction and um, his, he has his quick hips and like his jump cuts and all that in small spaces and the way he moves around. And I, I think it's, I think it's very, very good. Now, is he a power running back? Absolutely not. Like he's not going to be running through, you know, all sorts of tackles at the line of scrimmage. But I do think you kind of said about ETN how, you know, he may not be able to kind of pick what I forget what the exact terminology you used was about not being able to kind of manipulate um, mm-hmm. yeah. defenders where I think Chuba Hubbard, I think that's one of the best parts of his game. I think the tempo of his game and the pace and the pace that he plays at and the patience, you see a lot of guys with elite speed, just be like, Hey, I got this elite speed. Look at this. Whereas sometimes you're like, he doesn't look all that fast out there. And then boom, he hits that crease and he's gone. And some people, you know, you look at YouTube, you watch the game film, you watch the highlights. Some people will be like, I could run through those creases. Yes, some of those creases you could run through. But some of those creases, I think, look so good because he's so fast and elite at getting t- to that space that it looks like, damn, that was a, a lane that somebody could have drove a truck through. But I think he gets into that lane and goes through that lane so fast that most guys can't even consider that. Right. So I think I think there's a lot of good things with Chuba Hubbard. Is he a power guy? No, probably needs a little bit more of like a wide zone where I do think he does kind of pick, poke, slide. I think he's really good at manipulating yeah, defenders. Yeah, he is, for sure. Um, and then talking about what happened this year, there, there's a lot of people on the team who will basically say he had that ankle injury the from, the jump, from the jump. Yeah, from the jump. Yeah, from the jump. They lost three O linemen in the summer for various reasons, and then they lose two more starters week one. So their offensive line is decimated. Gundy on a quote says we're a little at a little disadvantage right now. We're playing guys that have never been at this level and we have a bunch of new guys. Um, They played a little bit better this week, but we have a ways to go. And I I believe that was after the the second game of the season when they're putting all these guys out there. So you have Chuba with an ankle injury. You have Chuba with all sorts of bad offensive linemen. You have a QB carousel. Sanders was in and out uh, injured again. Um, And, you know, they do have an elite wide receiver who's, who's pretty interesting. Um, 
But and then you have Mike Gundy, and there was conflict there. There yeah, was ton however of conflict. you want to chomp it up. Ton of conflict. There, there was there was definitely some friction. And right. So Mike Gundy was got was on photo wearing an OAN t shirt, which if you don't know what that is, um, because you're like a normal person, uh, OAN is like they're they're a news channel, and they basically make Fox News look liberal. That's how conservatively right OAN is. And you know, you got Mike Gundy who's sporting a mullet and a visor, and all those things don't jive together. And then you've got Chuba who's like an activist, and he's you know out there standing for what he believes in. And he's like, I'm not. You know, I think it was like a voluntary workout he was supposed to report to, and he's like, I'm not doing anything until we talk about some change here. And uh, and so you know that started in the off season, and 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 Gundy came out and apologized, and under you know he said all the right things. But I mean, come on, you knew what that you you know. Uh, in the, yeah, in the back of your head, man. I mean, uh, like it was a perfect storm for Chuba Hubbard in terms of things that could have gone wrong. Right, right. He's all also, of them did. He's also Canadian. He couldn't go home to see his family at all. Like he's, they're not letting anybody in. Oh, it's like, bad. Canada, I mean, Canada it was, is completely yeah. different. And th- then, then people were coming out and say he quit on the team, and then like his teammates are coming out and saying like this guy had no reason to even be here for half of the season. Like he could have walked away from the team, went back to Canada, lived his life. He didn't need to be here and he stuck it out. And then in that Oklahoma game, you see him playing, busting off a couple of runs and he's certainly still not right. He could be fucking his whole NFL career up with this shit. He came back because he fucking loves this team and he's a good dude. And uh, you know, you said Najee Harris came back because he needed to prove this or that. Maybe Najee Harris and Travis Etienne wanted to come back because they love their guys and you're never going to get this opportunity again. Maybe I actually want to get a degree. Maybe, you know, maybe I just want to try to win another national championship. Like there, there's right. all sorts of reasons to come back for guys and we just throw those to the wayside because of, you know, wow, go get this money. But like, it's not, right. it's not that for everybody. And so I think there are a lot of reasons for Chuba Hubbard struggles this year. And he didn't look quite himself on the uh, same on the field. Right. He, he didn't look like the same Chuba Hubbard of But when you gave him 20 carries, he averaged 110 yards. Like there was, right. there was, there was goodness there. And he's a make your play in one day. He's a guy who ran and all 2000 yards are not created equal in my opinion. Um, and we, we hate, I, I've hate, I hate it on Rashard Penny when he had his 200 yards. Cause I didn't think his yards after contact were created equal. All yards after contact are not created equal either. Like the way you're tracking those stats and you know, it could be an arm brush or a, a shitty arm tackle in a <laughs> shitty conference. And that arm, now you busted right. off a 60 yard run. A lot of Javante Williams yards after contact came against Duke, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> But man, I I just think I, I'm not I'm not gonna be out on Chuba Hubbard. Like, yes, there certainly is a lot of saturation with players in the NFL at the running back position, but he's a guy who could be the one A in the situation rather than the one B, in my opinion. Um, and I, I don't think his pass catching is necessarily an issue. No. People say he's an unnatural pass catcher. He's not the most natural pass catcher, but he can catch. Like hey, it's it's an average trait. Like right. that, that's the thing. It's not, it's good enough. It's okay. It it's is not a liability. I mean, a lot of the backs in this class, like there are really only two backs that you're like, these guys, this, these are received. Like these guys are like receiving back. Like these guys right. can go out and split out wide and, or play in the slot. The rest just have, there's some better than others, but I mean like ETN, right. Average skill set of his, Right. But like Hubbard, it, that's not going to, like it's not going to matter if you, if you get him in space, throw him the ball, you scheme. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be a scheme dependent thing for, for, Hubbard. but yeah, you said a lot of great things. I think, I think Hubbard is going to be a player um, that could be an absolute draft day steal in both your rookie drafts and the NFL draft. Because if he is 2019 Chuba, which he very well should be, he's going to be absolutely electric and supremely fun to watch. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, so I, I don't even have him all that far behind Javante Williams, if not still ahead of him. Like, I fucking love, okay. I I like, like that. Juba Hubbard. Like, I think the dude's fucking good. I, obviously, there, I think you could have a guy who's not a three down back in Javante as well, who's but just yeah. different stylistically. And Chuba, I would give the maybe advantage there because it's bigger, bigger chunk plays possibly for that guy instead yeah. of whereas you might get it's probably a wash and that's probably a silly thing to say. You probably get more 12 to 15 yard plays from Javante, Javante where it could have been a three yard play and he turns it into 12 and 15. Whereas Chuba, there could be a lot of net right. 
net three yard plays to a 60 yard play. No. Yeah. Uh, no, it totally makes sense. I think it's, you know, touchdown potential, a lot of stuff kind of goes into the factor too, but I think honestly, outside of tier one, it is pretty close. And in, in my opinion, I, it's going to really depend on where they go, their environment, who's their coach, their play caller, and how they like to use the running back and who they have in the backfield with them in terms of, you know, their running mates. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, man, you're right. You could very well come in the NFL and be a one a, what if he's the, what if he goes to Buffalo and it's just him, Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. You're telling me that Chuba Hubbard's not going to beat out Devin Singletary. Yeah. Of course he is. I, I just worry about the opportunity in that offense. See, this exactly. year they just, there's, they just mean, there's question marks in so it. many offenses. And that's, that, that's, and that's the intriguing part about this class in particular. Chuba in Arizona, so Chuba much. in San Francisco, those, and, and the, those kind of places intrigue right. me. And I think he will stick, stick around a little bit longer than he right. would have and be able to have maybe some of those teams grab For him. sure. Well, I think be the comment okay. that you made, uh, Angelo, about um, just I don't know what situation. Like, there's not a lot of great situations right. for any of these guys to go into, and that that's kind of a point that you're making about how it, it's it can be oversaturated um, in terms of you know NFL talent on these rosters, and, and you know you got these undrafted free agents or like a seventh round pick in Miles Gaskin, and and uh, coming in and and, and showing really well and getting a lot of production when given that opportunity. And you're just not sure where we can create this opportunity from, but what I, what like we're playing dynasty here. And to me, the situation can change so drastically so quickly oh, yeah. that I just want to stack talent on my team. And I, and, and when it comes to putting running backs on your roster, I feel like there isn't a ton of guys that you can just throw down there. I mean, that are just uber talented and, and, and Maybe you could argue against this, but like I just feel like the talent with Hubbard is is so good as a runner. It's just so fluid and like everything. There's just no wasted movement and the varying pace that he that he plays with. Like he lulls you to sleep, and then when they hit, there's no hesitation once the hole opens up. He's got really quick feet. He's got single step efficiency. I'm gonna steal that uh, line from you, okay. Angelo. Um, I think the vision is spectacular. The Ooh. cutbacks through tiny holes, like he's just, he, the, the pad level is 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 phenomenal, and just there's just so many good things about him. And then I'm willing to make a bunch of excuses for why that production took a hit this past year. That sure. I'm still, I can't knock this dude for 2020 too much. You know what I mean? I like it. It was man. 2020. Uh, you know? I know, man. It, absolutely. 2020. God damn it. I mean, yeah. I mean, he could be. Hey, if he is a top, he ends up being a top three back in this class. I'm not surprised at all. 